<laughs> this show that with such a the what happens in this story and the, and, and the amount of you know this in, historical injustice which this is just a small example of mm -hmm. but yet this show can still be toe tappingly entertaining and funny that's the brilliance of it <laughs> it's so in that moment uh, the the George Wallace moment there's so much tension in that cell there's so much tension in that jail and to hear <laughs> the audience react the way they do again with that nervous laugh uh, it, it's so entertaining that joke is so funny and so clever it's cleverly placed by David Thompson and uh, the story is just the show the night is filled with a lot of those moments it's it's mind-boggling that this material that's so weighty mm -hmm. that's so racially charged can be infused with with humor with gut-wrenching humor at times mm -hmm. it, it blows your mind and as an audience member I I'd have to think that you're sitting out there you're like <laughs> I cannot believe I'm laughing yes, right now. Yes, at some point in time, especially as a white audience member, sure. thinking, uh, should I be laughing should at I this? Should I be laughing? You're looking around, you're like, because I thought was, that was funny. But it makes you look inside, too. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. It makes you examine yourself in a lot of ways. Now, your character, um, while Coleman and Forrest are having all sorts of fun on mm -hmm. stage, your your character has to, to maintain a pretty, pretty intense <laughs> ferocity um, <laughs> You get a, a rare moment where you get to uh, where you start singing one song and sort of come out, you know, kind of break down the wall and come out of it. And then talk about that song. Um, what is that song, and, and how does your how does that sort of personify what's going on inside Haywood? The song, the song, nothing. Um, excuse me. It was a uh, really challenging at first to figure out exactly what was going on because. Haywood, it, it's a moment where he is told he's got to testify. And, you know, did you or did you not commit this crime? And Haywood goes back and forth from stating the, the truth, saying, I didn't do this. And it seems as though that's not enough mm -hmm. to just say it the way, that, the way that it is. Bland, straight up, I didn't do it, that's wrong. So he goes to this other place where he feels that they can hear him. And it's a, it's a very false place for Haywood, right. but it's a place that people at that time felt like he, that's the only way they could hear him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really, it, it took me a, a little while to, to figure out exactly how to go there because it was a, it's very, very uncomfortable yeah. to go to that very naive, uh, foolish, dumb stereotype uh, of, uh, well, yes, sir, uh, no, sir, right. type of, you could call it uh, slave talk, mm -hmm. you know, very uh, submissive. And, and, and Haywood goes all the way there. Mm -hmm. And he has to keep going back and forth. Back and forth in the same song. And, and so it's, as an actor, it's, it's very jarring to, to go back and forth like that, 100% to each side. Later, he is, he's told by uh, the attorney, mm. if you lie, you can be set free. Right. So that song sort of, he has that, you, you feel as an audience member that what he's feeling personified in that song mm -hmm. is, is, a, is something that he has to deal with the whole time he's incarcerated, where if I just, if I just go into that yes sir, no sir, yes massa, no massa, and play their game, yeah, I might be able to get paroled. I might, but they want me to say I did something I didn't right. do, and I'm not going to do it. Yeah, he has the capacity to do. He he knows he's a smart guy. This is exactly what I need to do. It's clear. Yeah, I don't have to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't have to to get free. All I have to do is lie. But he just won't. It 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 is ingrained in him that you can't do that, and you know partially because of a lot of the experiences that he had mm -hmm. in, in, in childhood, which I don't want to spoil that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, for a lot of reasons, he, he, his mind, his body won't let him say those words, mm -hmm. even in the face of death. He'll, he'll, he'll fight with the guards, he'll escape, he'll break 
He'll, he'll break laws to correct an injustice, hmm. but he won't lie. But, wow, yeah. Yeah. He won't lie. My wife and I, seeing the show, you really struck us with just your, your posture and just the intensity you brought to the role. Hmm. So you could, tell, you could tell you were finding something in it, and you brought a lot more to it than just the line. Well, Susan, I have, Susan Stroman really, I was so excited to work with her because, of course, she's an amazing uh, choreographer mm -hmm. and dancer. Um, so I wanted to really find out what the physical presence was supposed to be. And, and she really uh, helped me find that, that stillness and to trust it you know, as actors. We, you know, you're still on stage or you mm -hmm. move slowly and you're like, wait a minute, is this, is this reading? Is this enough? You know, you go through a lot of different things. but. Um, both reading Scott's for a boy and finding his, how he, how strong he was, mm -hmm. uh, stature-wise and and mentally, mm -hmm. um, working with Susan, she helped me find the the movement um, and to trust that. Mm -hmm. And that's you know we're we'll continue. You know it's not quite there yet, but it's a process, and you keep working towards that. So there was there was a there was a decision for for as the way you played Haywood to to be still. Yes. Well, because there's so much going on around you. Tambo and Bones, and it, Haywood is very much the real, the realism, the natural, mm -hmm. uh, real life character, as opposed to Tambo and Bones with all the, the jokes on the outside, mm -hmm. being the end man. And we definitely wanted to, Susan wanted to separate Haywood in terms of his movement. Um, the thing he would. People, the other eight boys would get nervous and, and frantic in the face of guns, but Haywood, he had a strength, and that strength was his truth. And so we wanted to show that a little, as much as we could. A <laughs> little bit of a spoiler alert. So if you, if you haven't seen the show, you might want to fast forward through this part. There's a character on the show, the lady. Mm. She's present. Um, the show starts with the lady waiting for a bus. It ends with the lady waiting for a bus. Um, it is made the audiences are made aware in the last moments of the show that the the lady is is rosa parks hmm. um you learn about rosa parks in elementary school and she wouldn't move to the back of the bus yeah. wouldn't stand up sometimes they tell the story well she was tired from a day of shopping her feet hurt but what they don't tell is that she and her husband in the 30s were very active in the Scottsboro Boys case in advocating for their release and, and getting public support for them. Yeah. Did you know of the Scottsboro Boys? I did not. I think I vaguely heard the name. I had no idea the magnitude of, mm -hmm. what, <laughs> of who they were. I, it, it seems like that's such a missing link in our history, especially for the Civil Rights Movement, in, in the way that things get compartmentalized and truncated, you often, you know, Rosa Parks is often cited as the, the flashpoint for the civil rights movement. Sure. But really, you, you could make an argument that it's the Scottsboro Boys because she knew, she was well aware of what Haywood went through and how he refused to, to, to give in the way that you said. He right. could have played the game and maybe gotten out. Right. But she knew that he didn't, and it maybe seems you can kind of get into her head when she decided what when she did what she did and who's to say at that moment exactly what she was thinking on that bus but but yes like you said here she and her husband were so instrumental in the Scottsboro boys case in the, in the marching for them and had Haywood not made that stand and caved in and said well you know what I just I just gotta get out maybe that would have been a little less uh, for Rosa Parks to 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 have made that decision we don't know but like you said, they were they were very much linked. The Scottsboro Boys case, and you know Haywood being the forefront, sort of the main focus around that. And he was we, always tried first. Yes, maybe. Thank you yeah. for your time. I wish you a lot of luck with the the run of the show. Thank it's you fantastic. very much. Nice to meet you. Thanks.